This girl, she's just looking at us. She just want to pose. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, okay, maybe not. Here you go. So there, quick update on my flower horn. He's doing super well. He's doing really good actually. He's very, very big now. He's about, I think, good seven inches. Yep, he's doing very well. And I've also got him a wave maker. Now I am not gonna be turning it on now because he's got food. And if I turn it on, the water's just gonna start moving and all the food are just gonna be like, <laughs> yeah, you know. But anyways, that's not what this video is about. Not this flower horn. The video is gonna be about the tarantulas. Just to show you guys that they are now in shoe boxes. Yes, the boxes that you keep shoe in no I did not say that wrongly but yeah you guys have seen this video over here where I have lost like four tarantulas I think four tarantulas and one scorpion because of the heat wave yep we've been experiencing pretty hot weather these couple months so I've transferred the teas into these enclosures where it will retain the moisture which will in return help to keep it a little bit cooler because if I keep them in an enclosure let's say like this right where the lid is very ventilated out is that even a correct term water evaporates super quickly when it is dry it gets super hot in there but yeah these two I, I they're doing fine for now I just transferred my Brazilian species the ones that live in South America at least not just Brazil and the Costa Rican and all those stuff anything in South America in Asia those that require cooler and more humid places and well actually those that even need super dry substrate but they do tolerate damp substrate they are in these shoe boxes because these shoe boxes over here let me just take one out for you all right so this is my Phonopalma Simani the Costa Rican zebra now these shoe boxes only have two holes just two holes to lower down the rate of evaporation of water so there's one hole over here and one hole over there so basically evaporation is not going to happen very very quickly because also evaporation goes upwards right so it'll take a longer time for the rate of evaporation to happen with side ventilation so let me just show you yes I know the water dish is dirty because when you transfer tarantulas onto new substrate they tend to get substrate and toss it into the water dish so yeah just to show you guys that this girl she's doing super well actually she's been in here for a good two weeks already and just check this out I know it's very very damp and humid in here but she is doing so much better with this damp substrate I shouldn't be touching that because she's very very fast and any movement she will literally go after and you see the thing is about this girl she is a pretty ungrateful one so anything you put in her enclosure she will tend to mess it up like for example this plant over here it looks nice right at the corner over here but then she just plucks all the leaves and just tosses them all around and just puts them in the water dish as well so yeah ungrateful girl but this enclosure has been doing her super well now if you're wondering why there isn't a height for her for those tarantulas that actually utilize height and height inside they have height but for those that have at heights before this in their previous enclosure now they don't because in the previous enclosure they never used the height so yeah this girl was one of them and she is doing like super well now because these guys when they were in these kind of enclosures it got super dry and they're always like crunched up at one corner their legs are always like yeah but now you look at her her legs are open I mean kind of she, she's a little bit scared now because I just opened the lid but if you just come into the room and just watch them like this you see this one it's not scrunched up right this one is my Cericopelma rubroni tens. See, the moment when I touch the lid, they crunch up even more. Before this, she was on dry substrate and she just never, she just refused to eat. But now on this, she just eats. Yeah, she eats. And this girl, she always eats. So now all of these guys are doing super well as well. You will see them in future videos because I'm not going to be rehousing them out of these very, very soon into these because the heat, whoa, calm down, man. But yeah, back to the tarantulas. The next one over here, we have a choco golden knee this one uses a height uses that height so as you can see it has a height okay fine I'll, I'll take this out because it's difficult to film like this oof and also these shoe boxes allows me to save space I mean because look at this you can get three stacked up in one row and you can make four rows unlike these where you can only have two and four rows so yeah you see and then they don't utilize this much like over here I can like use substrate 
to fill half of this and they do well. And then you get these enclosures where you can only put two, yeah, you know, you just can't save space. But for shoe boxes, if you guys have a lot of tarantulas, shoe boxes are the way to go. But I mean, of course, if you have like burrowing species, like for example, Miss Thailand Black over here, which I mean, she doesn't even burrow, like there she is. You get these kind of tubs with deep substrate and then you can like stack them up. Yep, something like this. And then if you have like a clear space, like for me, I have this table over here, so I can't really stack them up, only two in one row. But if you have like a clear space, you can stack a lot up, just like these shoe boxes. So yeah, I was gonna show you my charcoal golden knee. There we go. So this is my charcoal golden knee. Water dish, not full, but not too dirty. She does utilize that height. Like, look at this. She wants to go in. Beautiful girl, big butt. You know charcoal golden knees, they prefer, people say, they prefer dry substrate, right? Like a bone dry substrate. But she seems to be doing so much better on this substrate. See, there she goes. So much better on this substrate compared to the dry substrate she was on. I think partly because also the weather over here. But so you, yeah, you can't say that I'm housing them wrongly because the weather where you guys live or where most of you guys live because majority of my viewers are from America, you guys have four seasons. Spring, summer, fall, winter. And you don't have hot weather all year round, but we do. We have 86 to 96 degrees Fahrenheit whole year round. Yes, whole year round. So this is how I'm going to be housing them because they do better. It's not that when you read that these species require super dry substrate, they're going to do much better with dry substrate over here. No, they're doing much better with damp substrate over here. In fact, I believe it's because of the weather. And then over here, we have my, what is this? Nandu, Nandu, Nandu. I can't quite remember remember this is the Brazilian red and this one over here this is my Aphonopelma by Colorado I mean look at her this is what a tarantula should look like like this is how they should stand not all crunched up because that shows that they are either stressed or yeah I would think that they're stressed if they're like this but this girl man she is what a tarantula should look like I mean how they should stand Oh yeah, now I remember. This is the Nandu Carapoensis, the Brazilian red. Carapoensis, remember that. It's stall in my head. Carapoensis. Oh yeah. This video is gonna be very, very long. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna be showing you every single tarantula, but just to show you guys some, because I think you guys deserve that. But I'm not gonna be showing all because this video is like super long already. This is my, what is this? This is Acanthoscoria Chacoana Bolivian Pink. Oh my God, seriously? You just like, but the thing is, the good thing is, now that they're on damage, substrate they will not dehydrate as quickly as if they were on super dry substrate so even if their water dish isn't full like always which I mean I would prefer if it's full so stay tuned for a new watering video very very soon they will not dehydrate so I will not have to worry too much of them going to die because of the heat wave and because of it being too dry so yeah it, 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 it's a win-win situation. They're happy on dry substrate and I don't always have to monitor their water dishes. I mean, I do monitor their water dishes because I always like their water dishes clean, but it's just that I just transferred them in here not too long ago and they just, yeah, that's what they did to their water dish. I mean, some of them, they're grateful like this Andersonia over here. They keep their water dish clean and oh, oh yeah, one more thing why keeping them like this is good because water does not evaporate very, very quickly. So look at this. The same water when I rehouse her look at this it's still almost full because the water does not evaporate super quickly and also because the substrate is damp so it doesn't like absorb the water that's in the water there somehow it does i don't know how evaporation works but yeah it, it doesn't and then that's a good thing so this is my uh what do you call this i can't score a oh my god yeah i just woke up so i'm kind of like forgetting all of their names she's doing super well as well Woo. and oh yeah one more thing see there's so many pros when housing them in these shoe boxes another pro is that the substrate i can fill them like half just half and i don't have to worry about the tarantula climbing up oh look at this guy this girl she's just looking at us she just want to pose whoa 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 okay okay maybe not. <laughs> she almost got my hand there. But yeah, as I was saying, I can fill the substrate here. I don't have to worry about the tarantula climbing up and falling down because if I house these heavy bodied tarantulas into these kind of enclosures, I'm going to have to fill the substrate like until here in order for them to like not die from climbing up and falling down because tarantula, their abdomen is very heavy. So if they fall from a high height, they can just fall and just rupture their abdomen. This is my king baboon. She's always like down there. She, she never comes up. So the water dish is, I mean, she never drinks the water, but because this lid
it is so evaporating, so evaporating, it, it, it makes evaporation happen very, very quickly. The water like depletes super quickly. Now this water I replenished like four days ago and look at that, it's already gone. Whereas this water, I will replenished it like one and a half weeks ago and look at that, you, you can see by yourself. So yeah, this, I'm gonna be doing this really quickly and like I said, not gonna be showing you every tarantula but just to show you guys some. This is my Nandu Tripepi, the, what do you call this? Brazilian, oh man, sorry guys. Giant Blonde, yeah, Brazilian Giant Blonde. See, I, I can't even remember their names. This is another Janiculata, White Knee. Water dish, pretty full as well, but there's substrate inside, so it's not the cleanest. But I mean, it wouldn't kill her. Over here, we have my, oh my gosh, this girl. This is a pumpkin patch, which I'm not sure where she is. You wanna see her? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you wanna see her, so. Over there, the male eater, boyfriend eater. Man, tarantula, oh my! Yeah, boyfriend eater. Not a very nice name, but I mean, that's what she is. So yeah, this video is really very long. We'll do a tour, like a literal every tarantula tour on the shoe boxes, but in another video because this video is really too long. And this video, I just wanted to mention to you guys that I transferred them into shoe boxes just to show you guys because of the weather. Not a video that I'm going to show you every single tarantula. We'll do that in another video. So yeah, that will be it for this video. Sorry for the awkward ending. <laughs> I wasn't even supposed to show you guys the tarantulas today because I just wanted to let you guys know that they're in shoe boxes now if you want to judge you can judge because I'm doing the best for them for where I live okay not everywhere is the same but yeah I mean that, uh, that's apart from this topic so yeah that will be it for this video if you have any questions leave it down in the comments if I read it I'm sorry if I don't reply to every single comment anymore because it's like literally thousands I mean hundreds yeah I mean it reaches a thousand but hundreds I'll say hundreds because if I say a thousands then okay stop rambling there are hundreds of comments that I can cannot keep track of. If I come across a question that needs to be answered, I will answer it, okay? So yeah, that'll be it for this video. If you liked it, thumbs it up. If you didn't, thumbs it down. New to this channel, subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Patreons, social media links, description below. And that is it. I will see you guys in the next video. Take care and you guys know what to say. Peace. All right, now he's finished his food. Let's turn on the wave maker just so you guys can see. And there we go, look at this. And the water goes wild. This will kind of like force him to swim because sometimes when there's no wave maker, he'll just sit there and just be lazy. But with the wave maker, he's gonna be swimming all right. Look at that. <laughs> so yeah, that's gonna be beneficial for him.